Over the past four months, I have been working tirelessly behind the scenes alongside Simple Shark and Mr. Swaggles to bring you guys the biggest and hardest training map we've ever seen in Rocket League. With $5,000 in cash prizes that you can win, I teamed up with Immortals and Progressive to introduce to you the Immortals Progressive Tower. This huge tower is filled with 20 levels all with different concepts and challenges, some never seen before in a training course in Rocket League. There are three difficulties, easy, medium, and hard, and when I say hard isn't easy, it's very difficult. But I wanted it to be that way. At any skill level, this map will push your limits, and since I started practicing on this map, I've been feeling extremely consistent in the standard game. The core idea of the map is that almost every level can loop upon itself, and you are chasing the finish line which runs away from you. But there's also a wall behind that's chasing you, which makes every level quite a challenge. Speaking of challenge, Immortals and Progressive have a few prizes to give out. Keep in mind, all prizes are for hard mode. There's a speedrunning page on speedrun.com set up for the whole contest, so be sure to submit your run over there. I'll have all the links in the description, and all the rules are posted in the map top left. The first prize is $1,000 to the fastest time posted on speedrun.com within the first 24 hours of release. The rest of the prizes are for first, second, and third place after two weeks of release. So you have until the end of July to submit your runs. Now let me show you what you're up against. There's a tutorial which explains a few things that you may run into, but I'm going to show you my first ever full run on hard to give you guys a good idea of how to tackle these challenges. We start off in level 1, a pacer test of sorts, where the idea is to quickly jump over the gaps and go back and forth to pick up the collectibles to open the next gate. Level 2 starts to introduce aerial play, with precise use of boost to navigate through obstacles. You'll have to be very careful with feathering your boost to get up to the platforms and loop back to the start of the level to catch up to the finish line. Level 3 introduces a brand new concept in training maps where a ball can spawn mid-air as you try to shoot on the target. Keep in mind the size of the target changes on each difficulty. Hard is pretty small so you have to hit your shots. This level has 3 targets which all need to be cleared in order for the goal to be open at the end. Level 4 starts to expand on the looping concept of levels by having alternate paths which cross over one another. There isn't always just one way that you can beat a level. Some levels in the future will showcase different shortcuts that take some skill if you want to use them. Level 5 is all about precise flips and aerials through tight gaps. The goal is constantly just out of reach until you pick up pace throughout the open sections. Make sure to memorize the path as you go through each hole in the wall to make it easier for yourself.
Level 6 introduces moving platforms and also showcases an interesting property of a circular course. The closer you are to the center of the ring, the faster you travel around the circle. So as you jump between the platforms which spin faster around the ring, you start to catch up to the finish line even though you've been supersonic the whole time. This concept is very important for most levels, so keep that in mind. I really like level 7. With a pre-flip to start your journey, this level has many precise jumps as well as an upside down ramp to reach some platforms. Be mindful of overusing your boost on this one. Level 8 is another level with precise jumps and very limited boosts. There are some tough spots that require you to save up enough boosts to reach the rings at the end. Level 9 takes the mid-air ball spawn concept to a whole new level by forcing players to repeat a shot 5 times in a row in order to reach the finish. This is definitely one of the most satisfying levels to ace. Level 10 seems innocent enough at the start, but it throws a lot at you at once at the end. You'll need to hit both targets and open the gate to reach the finish. Level 11 is one of two parkour levels. Don't worry, easy and medium gets some boost for these two. You'll need to open each gate in order to reach the end of the level, and you'll need a lot of speed to reach the finish line. Level 12 is another moving platform level. This center platform travels with you the entire time, sometimes underwater, and you'll need to keep up with it to reach it when it comes back out.
Level 13 is a tough one. There's a long dribble section you'll come to, and depending on how fast you complete the first half of the level, you'll have more or less time to navigate the ball through the snake-like course. Level 14 is a really interesting concept. This rings course will send you in an infinite loop chasing the end goal if you stay on the outside. It's not possible to reach the gate quickly if you stay on the outer section, and you'll have to find a way to cut into the center rings. There are some really tough earlier shortcuts, but I wanted to show that each of them gets easier. Here's an example of a ring bounce that you can do to get through the first open shortcut. It wasn't the cleanest landing, but you get the idea. Level 15 expands on level 9 by introducing larger gaps to the target, as well as a tough final target to reach. There are many approaches that you could take either by air dribbling or launching and shooting the ball, but either way, some control is needed to beat this one. Level 16 has all five platforms rotating together around the level, which means that the inner platforms have a much slower angular velocity. So as you travel from obstacle to obstacle, you have to keep in mind that the outer platforms are very fast while the inner platforms are very slow. Timing your jumps and landings is key. Level 17 is the second and final parkour level, requiring some pretty precise jumps as well as finding a way to gain speed for the final jumps. You can either jump off the ramp or double jump after to get you enough height for that final climb. Level 18 is reminiscent of classic dribble maps, requiring you to take the ball to the very end of the loop and hit the final target to escape. The red wall behind you is very quick, so be sure to keep up your pace. Level 19 is one of my favorite levels because it introduces inverted gravity, forcing players into very uncomfortable spots with their cars. The gravity switches every 45 degrees of the loop, requiring precise timing and adjustments when the gravity flips on the player.
and now on to the final level, level 20, aptly named Comprehensive, which encompasses a bunch of concepts over the entire course. This level is very punishing on some sections and requires accuracy, control, and speed. As you complete the final level, your times are listed on the finish screen, and if you have the map expansion plugin in Bacchus mod, your times will actually be saved for future runs when you load up the map again. As you can see here, the final levels never had a finish time for me, so for now on I'll have this run saved and I can try to beat it in the future. I really hope you guys enjoy and make use of this training course, and let me know what you guys think of the challenge. The three of us poured our hearts and souls into this over the last four months, and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Best of luck to everyone competing, and as a reminder, here's the prize breakdown. Until next time, have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.